U-2 pilot Francis Gary Powers makes his first public appearance since he was exchanged for Soviet spy Rudolf Abel. Powers testifies before the Senate Armed Services Committee using a model of his plane. His capture and trial in the Soviet Union caused an international furor in 1960. Well, my father's flying at his assigned altitude of 70,500 feet. There's eight SA-2 missiles that are fired at his aircraft from Soviet missile bases near the city of Sverdlovsk. One of the missiles explodes behind the tail section, basically blows the tail section off. The nose pitches forward, the wings snap off. He falls out of the sky, spinning down towards the ground. He's able to clear himself from the wreckage. His parachute opens at about 15,000 feet. Once he lands on the ground, he's apprehended, turned over to the KGB, and then uh, he is uh, uh, basically stuck in the Soviet Union for the next 21 months. Three-day trial, August of 1960, the verdict, 10 years in prison. He finishes out that sentence, the next 18 months of it, in Vladimir. Vladimir prisons three hours outside of Moscow. So my father was shot down over the Soviet Union on May 1st of 1960, spends almost two years in a Soviet prison. Then in February of 62, he's exchanged for a Soviet spy, Rudolf Abel, at the Glenniker Bridge in Potsdam, Germany. Colonel Rudolf Ivanovich Abel was sentenced to 30 years in prison. How many secrets passed from Colonel Abel to the Soviet Union is not yet publicly known. On August 7, 1957, the tenant of that studio was charged with being a colonel in Soviet intelligence. His real name, Rudolf Ivanovich Abel. Convicted Russian spy Rudolf Abel was sentenced to 30 years, escaping the death penalty after his attorney argued that the United States might want to swap Abel for an American at some future time. Now, Abel has been exchanged for U-2 pilot Gary Powers. Uh, your father was snubbed here stateside on many levels of government. A lot of American citizens thought he should never have come home alive. Uh, he did. He chose to, and he wanted to live his life. He had a family, uh, for goodness mm -hmm. sakes. But he was maligned, and he was snubbed by the John F. Kennedy White House. He was invited initially to the White House, and in the last minute, uh, at the, uh, the 11th hour, the Attorney General, Robert F. Kennedy, says, no, put the kibosh on this meeting. Don't meet with him. No. Well, at the time, uh, as, as my mother told me when I was growing up, uh, Robert Kennedy, uh, the president's younger brother, was attorney general. Uh, he was trying to make a name for himself. He wanted to try my father as a traitor to the country. He convinced his older brother, the president, not to meet with my father after the meeting has been scheduled. The meeting was supposed to take place on March 6th of 1962, after my father's appearance before the Senate Select Committee hearing. My father goes into the committee hearing, eight hours of deliberations, questions and answers back and forth. At the end of the session, the senators give him a standing ovation, basically a pat on his back, good job for your country. But by that time, the presidential meeting had already been canceled because Bobby Kennedy did not want his brother to be associated with my father because it could have turned out that the Senate would have booed my father or, or labeled him a traitor. Who knows what could have happened? But instead, they labeled him a hero to the country they exonerate him of any wrongdoing. But by that time, the presidential meeting has already been canceled, and basically dad was snubbed by the JFK administration. 